Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the two reaction theory. Two reaction theory, we can give the another name that is the two reactances theory. Another name is the two reactances theory. That means we should discuss about the two reactances. Right. So to understand these two reactances, first we will look at the two types of rotor construction of the synchronous machine. First construction is, just look at here, this is the cylindrical construction. Cylindrical construction. So here, this is the cylindrical rotor and this is the stator. The another construction is, uh, we have the another construction that is the salient pole construction. The another construction is the salient pole. That means poles have saliency like this. Poles have the saliency like this. Okay. Right. <laughs> so cylindrical construction as well as the salient pole construction. So just observe here. For cylindrical construction, we have only one reactance. No problem at all. So just look at here, in cylindrical rotor, synchronous machine air gap is in uniform. Just look at here, this is the rotor and this is the stator. It has the uniform air gap, that means everywhere air gap is the same. So the armature reaction around the entire air gap is the single reactance. Just look at here, we can represent with this is the single reactance. He is sufficient for modeling the armature reaction. So we have only, this is represents with the only one reactance, simply. Reactance means which opposes the um, flux, we can name it which opposes the flux. Next. Next, just look at here. What about salient? Salient, salient rotor, just observe here. We have the two things. This is called the direct axis, one thing. The another thing is the quadrature axis. Direct axis and the quadrature axis. Just look at here, this is the direct axis and the quadrature axis. So direct axis having uh, one reactance, XD. Quadrature axis having the another reactance, that will be the XQ. This will be the XD and this will be the XQ. Okay, yeah. Just look at here. So, in salient pole machine, the air gap is minimum along the direct axis. Just look at here. So, along direct axis, air gap is the minimum. Next, maximum along the quadrature axis. Just look at here. From the quadrature axis, it is the maximum. Right. So it requires two reactances, one is XAD, another one is the XAQ, XAQ. So one, one is the direct axis reactance, another one is the quadrature axis reactance. That is the reason two reactances theory or two reaction theory is represented here. So that's why so armature reactance is at this particular area we have, we can represent XD or XAD. This is called XAQ, XAQ, quadrature axis reactances. Okay, that's why this is called the two reaction theory. Two reaction theory. What is two reaction theory? Or simply, uh, just look at here. Direct axis have the uh, different air gap, XAD, and quadrature axis has the different air gap, XAQ. Right. Here, XD we can write direct axis synchronous reactance. XQ is quadrature axis synchronous reactance, right? We can write some equations that is XD direct axis reactance. We can give some equation that is XAD plus X leakage reactance. Next, what about XQ? XQ is we can write XAQ plus the leakage reactance plus leakage reactant. This is the combination of direct axis uh, reactants plus leakage reactants, quadrature axis reactants plus leakage reactants. That is the XD 
and this is the x cube combination right so generally we have the relation that is the xd is greater than x cube generally direct axis reactance is more than a quadrature axis reactance that value is xd equal to 1.52 two times of the x cube 1.52 two times of the x cube so here xd minus x cube called the saliency uh, the difference between the direct axis reactance and the quadrature axis reactance is called as a saliency right so here here we next we will discuss about the slip test slip test is the test which is used to find out the direct axis reactance as well as a quadrature axis reactance that is xd and xq can be determined by the slip test so both will be determined by the slip test okay right here here just look at here just so the slip test is like this this is the armature of the synchronous machine and this is the rotor of the synchronous machine and here we are applying so this data uh, it will be connected to the rotor or flux will be transferred we can name it as the flux will be transferred right here a reduced to 20 to 25 percent of the rated voltage applied to the armature so we have the armature is available here 20 to 25 percent of rated voltage is directly applied to this armature we have the armature here we are applying the here next next is case one we have the first case the first case is case one when the armature poles are mmf aligned with the direct axis so we have the armature poles north and south that will be aligned with the direct axis so here we have the direct axis these are aligned both are aligned combined and what happened we have to look at here here air gap is minimum so just look at here in this particular area air gap is minimum reluctance is also minimum reluctance is also minimum therefore the current drawn from the supply is also minimum but the voltage is the maximum across it the voltage is maximum across it so whenever uh, simply whenever the air gap is less means reactance is also less then emf generation is the more so we can write now always flux lines flow from the north pole to south pole okay here we can write on rotor we can give one equation that is we can give one equation flux changes e will be the maximum and then d psi by dt equal to zero then rate of change of flux change will be zero and minimum emf minimum emf will be generated that is the zero value minimum emf is generated that is the zero value and we can give some equations so at direct axis just look at here at direct axis armature current is minimum we know that and armature voltage generation is the maximum so direct axis reactance we can give the formula that is va max by ia minimum va max by ia minimum va max by phase by ia minimum by phase so by doing this we will get direct axis reactance we will get the direct axis reactance xt right next all right next case 2 we can discuss about the case 2 when the armature poles are aligned with quadrature axis with the air gap so these are the armature poles and this is the quadrature axis and this is the quadrature axis 
So the reluctance is maximum. In this case, the flux flow from this point to this point, more air gap, reluctance is maximum. To establish the constant flux, the current drawn from the supply also maximum. So it will take the more and more current. And the meter shows maximum reading and voltmeter shows the minimum reading by this. Right. So from this, at quadrature axis, at quadrature axis, so armature current is the maximum. Okay. And armature voltage is the minimum. Armature voltage is the minimum. Right. So finally, we can conclude that quadrature axis reactance XQ equal to VA minimum by IA maximum. VA minimum for phase by IA maximum for phase. VA minimum for phase by IA maximum for phase. Okay. So, this is about the slip test and in that direct axis reactance and quadrature axis reactance. I hope all of you understand the session. Thank you.